Hello curious learners, this is Mr. Buffington and we are doing the lesson about multiplying polynomials. This one here is multiplying rather large polynomials or starting out smaller and, and moving into larger polynomials. To know how to do this you need to have a background already in multiplying monomials times polynomials and probably want to have a background also maybe review the lesson on multiplying binomials times binomials because by the end if you don't have that background you're going to be thoroughly confused. Hopefully not too badly confused but I would definitely have that background before moving forward. So let's take a look real quick at what a polynomial is. A polynomial can be any number, any variable, or any combination of a number with a variable. There are a couple of exceptions when it comes to um, exponents. You need to have positive exponents um, and you can't have a, a variable in a denominator. You can't have a fraction exponent. Um, but basically for most case it's, it's stuff like this where you're taking a term like 3a and you're adding it to another term and adding it to another term. So these are examples of polynomials and we are going to take these types of, of polynomials and multiply them together today. So with this question what we're going to do is go ahead and use the distributive property to multiply this monomial negative 2x times this trinomial or three termed polynomial 8x plus 7y plus 1. To do that we take the monomial and we multiply it times each term inside of the parentheses. Negative 2x times 8x gives us negative 16x squared. Negative 2x times 7y gives us negative 14xy. And negative 2x times 1 gives us negative 2x. So you see that process. You take everything inside of the first set of parentheses and you multiply it times everything inside of the second set of parentheses. That is the distributive property. Another way to say it is we distribute what's inside the first set of parentheses into the other sets of parentheses. Here's one for you to try. It has two terms in the first polynomial. In other words, it's a binomial multiplied times a trinomial. Go ahead and give that one a try. For these larger polynomials, you need to keep an organized way of remembering what you've done. That's why I like to draw these lines here. Helps me remember what I'm doing. g times 7g gives me 7g squared. g times 4h gives me 4gh. And g times 5 gives me 5g. So that's how I would kind of multiply the first term inside the binomial times the trinomial. Now I'm going to do the same exact process only multiplying negative 2 times each of these terms. Negative 2 times 7g gives me negative 14g. Negative 2 times 4h, negative 8h. And negative 2 times 5 gives me negative 10. Now with this one, it's a little bit different. There's one extra step. We need to realize that inside of this large polynomial that we have here, there are some like terms. 5g and negative 14g have exactly the same variable. So we need to join those terms together for our final answer of negative 9g. See that? So this large polynomial is our final answer simplified as much as we can simplify it. We're going to do the same exact process with different numbers, so go ahead and solve this multiplication question. When we start out multiplying, we multiply 2a times 3a. That gives us 6a squared. I'm going to color things up a little bit here. 2a times negative 2b, that would give us negative 4ab. We multiply the numbers and join together the variables. 2a times negative 11 will give us negative 22a. So those are the first three 
multiplication questions we're doing. The first term times all three terms inside of the parentheses. Let's get rid of those arrows, move on to our next term. 1 times 3a gives us 3a, 1 times negative 2b gives us negative 2b, and 1 times negative 11 gives us negative 11. 1 is kind of a nice number there because essentially we're just writing out the second trinomial, or the, the second polynomial there, just write it all out, 3a minus 2b minus 11. And by doing this, we have made sure that we've multiplied every single term inside of the first set of parentheses times every single term inside of the second set of parentheses. We also, we do have some terms that we can join together, negative 22a and positive 3a, the blue and the red terms there. They are like terms, they have the same variable, so we're going to join them together. Negative 22 plus 3 gives us negative 19a, everything else remains exactly as it was. For our final question, I've decided to go absolutely crazy. Um, just to show you that you follow this same exact process no matter what size the polynomial, I've decided to make a crazy large polynomial question that you can go ahead and solve first. So I'd like you to take out your notebooks, this might, may take a while, and solve this question then come back and watch the recording to see if the solution is what you came up with. All right, I'm going to use the color yellow for all of this um, to try and keep it, again, nice and concise. Hopefully this works. x times 3x gives us 3x squared. x times negative 2y gives us negative 2xy x times negative 3z gives us negative 3xz. And x times 2 gives us 2x. All right, the first term times the, the entire polynomial is now set. I'm going to get those arrows out of the way. Move on to my second term. Here we go. 2y times 3x will give us positive 6xy. 2y times negative 2y gives me negative 4y squared. 2y times 3z gives us negative 6yz. And finally, 2y times 2 gives us 4y. So to clean things up, I, really, I have to get rid of everything down there so that I can work on my third term. So the third term is z. And I'm going to multiply that times, or negative z, I should say. Negative z, and I'm going to multiply that times each term inside of the second set of parentheses. Negative z times 3x gives us negative 3xz. Negative z times negative 2y gives me a positive 2yz. Negative z times negative 3z gives me a positive 3z squared. And the final multiplication I'm doing, negative z times 2 gives me negative 2z. Wow. All right. So that is quite the question. It's got lots and lots of terms. And what we have to do, the trick here is actually figuring out all the terms that we need to combine for our final answer. This is your final answer. This should be your final answer here. We have... 3x squared, that goes straight down. With this one, we have 2xy, but we, or negative 2xy. We also have a positive 6xy, so they will form together to make this positive 4xy. Then we have negative 3xz, but we have another xz way over here, another negative 3xz, so those will come together to be negative 6xz. 2x comes straight down. This one here is already over there. Negative 4 at y squared comes straight down to here. Negative 6 yz. We have another yz over here that we're going to join together to get negative 4 yz. Then we're going to bring down 4y. Those two are already taken care of. 3z squared and 2z. Complicated question. 
really complicated question. And the, the bigger they get, the more silly and ridiculous that they get. But if you're able to do these, you can do them any size as long as you've got the time to do it. So some things to remember. Everything inside the first times everything inside the second. Everything in the first set of parentheses gets multiplied times everything in the second set of parentheses. You multiply the numbers, join the variables, add the exponents for the, if the variables are the same. Those are the steps you'll follow no matter how big those polynomials get, you'll be able to do it. Great job, great work today. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.